Hey friends, have you ever had problems with fungus gnats in your seed starting area or over your house plants, those teeny tiny insects which are flying around and can be a really pain in you know where? Today we'll talk about those and how to get rid of them. Do they harm the plants and where they're actually coming from and how really to take control over them. So let's get started. So what are actually fungus nets? So oftentimes I think people confuse them with like fruit flies because they look very, very similar also in the size, but they're actually a little different little um, insect which emerges usually in warm and humid conditions where some organic matter is around. So when you hear that, you can imagine why they love the seed starting season so much when we try to keep our seedlings cozy and warm and moist for that reason it is really something what attracts them so they are a small long-legged fly which just loves emerged out of those humid and hot conditions they are also dark winged so that is i think the um, common um, differentiator for example to fruit flies and typically where they emerge they are also attracted by light so typically when you see them they are flying always towards the light so you can see them like oftentimes being attracted to the light of your growth station or to windows when you have house plants around this is where you can find them sometimes so they are really a pain which um, when they occur and they can occur for for multiple reasons either you got a house plant where some um, were already harboring some eggs were harboring in the soil or some larvae um, same with any type of soil you might use for seed starting, right? So you, it's really, really hard to avoid them, but it's really important to know what to do once you see them because then they are not that hard to control. The important thing is, and we'll look at the life cycle shortly, what to do when they appear and to do it fast. Uh, that is, I think, the key because sometimes people think, oh, there are just one or two flying around. I'll take care of that tomorrow, next week, whatever. But that is exactly the wrong thing. And that was the mistake I made last year when I had them for the first time in my seed starting um, setup. I was like, I'll, I'll take care of it <laughs> on the weekend. It was like Monday, Tuesday. Let me just tell you that problem um, exponentially got bigger with every day I waited. So for that reason, time is of the essence here. Do not wait. Do you hear me? Do not wait. When you see the first one, go get it. That is how you get rid of them in the most effective way. But let's get let's get a little bit more into the specifics because um, a very common question is, can they actually kill the plant? And the answer is unfortunately, yes, they can. Even though they're teeny tiny and look like they couldn't couldn't harm a thing, they are very harmful to especially seedlings. The adult fungus net is not the problem here, it's the larvae. And the larvae is what is sitting in the soil, you won't see them typically, and they are eating and feeding on organic matter, and what they prefer on the menu is the root hairs from fresh little seedlings. And you can imagine that that doesn't go well. So they damage the roots in your seedlings and in the soil under the surface and really can be harmful to new seedlings. So whenever you ha have fungus nets around and you see that some seedlings are not growing um, as they are supposed to or as you have known them to grow uh, typically, could be a fungus net larvae chomping on the roots on under the surface. Where are what what attracts them or what makes the problem worse is your watering practices. So they typically lay the eggs and need really warm and moist conditions on the top of the soil. So whenever you water from the top and you keep the top layer of the soil um, wet and really humid for them to um, make a cozy home, that is where they are really thriving and get hard to come by. How you can avoid this, especially with your seedling, try to bottom water what you can. And also try to have your um, soil dry out a little bit so that you are able to really um, get a little bit of dry soil on the top because they really don't like it if the soil gets dry in between. If you keep it, if you keep it moist um, along the way, 
they will love it. They will make, they will build a town in there, right? So <laughs> that is just something to keep in mind. Bordering, watering, bottom watering is important. So let's talk a little bit about the life cycle here because with the life cycle, you see how quickly that problem can get um, worse. So they have about an entire lifespan of four weeks. Doesn't sound bad, right? But let me walk you here through what what's happening and why it's so important to get them early, as I mentioned that already. So the eggs are typically hatching after four to six days. Different sources say different things. Let's just say four to six days um, as a good measure. Then what they do is in the larvae stage, this is where they are actually living the longest. In the larvae stage, you can't see them. You don't know how big your problem are because it's under the ground. And even if you would dig through the soil, it's really, really hard to see because they're teeny tiny. It's like really wide little translucent um, larvae um, worms with a little black head. Even last year when I had a big problem, I had a trouble finding them because I was curious to see if I can actually see them. So they are really, really small. Um, but in that stage, they are the longest of their entire lifespan. So, and again, as they love to eat and are hungry, this is where they can do the most damage as they are standing or are in this life stage for almost three weeks. So when once they are done feeding, they turn into a little pupa or papa, however you pronounce it, pupa, <laughs> pupe. Um, and that is about four days and then they emerge as adults. So with the adults, it's really important to know that one adult typically lays 100 to 200 eggs per one little fungus net. Right, so just imagine you didn't um, catch five or so. Next time you look and you have um, 500 at your hands, right? So in the worst case, so that is just something what you need to keep in mind. Getting onto them early is key here. And I know I'm repeating myself, but I hope that will stick to you. <laughs> so that is something what you should keep in mind, that hockey stick um, effect if you don't get to them. So what are you able to do to actually control them? I have a triple threat, which I always apply to it, and it's a little bit preventative, but then also from the moment you see some emerge, it's usually, it helps you to understand or to see how many emerge and really get ahead of it as fast as you can. So my typical thing is I have always those traps out. Those are those yellow sticky traps. For some reason, they are attracted to the color yellow. Um, they have like some sticky component on it. So when the adult um, fungus gnats fly on it, they stick on it and the thread is over. Those are the larger ones. I typically have a large one hanging close to my lights because remember when I said they love to fly to the lights. So that is really helpful there. And then just the smaller ones I usually position between my seedlings. Um, preventative, they're not that expensive. I think 10 bucks or so on Amazon. So again, prevention is here the key <laughs> to avoid any, any trouble. Uh, so I rather have a few more of them around for preventative purposes. And they are really, really great as first line of defense to get the adults and also to see when the adults emerge. The next thing is mosquito bits. So they are um, uh, they are known for killing the la larvae. And what they do is, so um, works obviously for mosquitoes as well, but um, it's the same um, type of um, bacillus which um, dissolves in the water. And once the plant takes that water with that bacillus up, it has the capacity to kill those larvae in the ground. So they are a really, really great way to also get ahead of the larvae in case you don't see them when they're already around. What I typically do is I sprinkle always some mosquito bits. I do soil blocks, right? So I sprinkle those mosquito bits in the, cap, um, in the channels where I water and just have them sit there and just sprinkle like every like 14 days a few more in it like a teaspoon or so um, because I don't have large large trays for my larger ones it's maybe a tablespoon I'm not really much into measuring with those ones here because they don't do any other harm um, to the plant so I really like to use those and the third option which I do if all the other prevention measures didn't help 
I have something what's called Nartrol. I'll put the name on the screen and also link below. Um, this is a stuff which you can get at the Gardener's Workshop from uh, Lisa Mason Seekler again in a really nice four ounce little bag because otherwise they just sell that in those big buckets. And it's a really um, great way you just dissolve this in your water again and then water the ceilings with it. The bacillus in the Gnartrol is slightly different than the one in the um, mosquito bits. So if mosquito bits don't help, help, the chances are high that this one will kill the larvae. And yeah, it's the same thing. You just dissolve it in water and water it with it. Lisa Mason Seekler even recommend, recommends to water once a week your soil blocks with that mix, just again, for preventative measures. With fungus nets, prevention is the game here. Cool. So I hope this video was interesting, a little bit of an icky one, <laughs> but I hope um, the level of information was helpful and just to learn about the life cycle and how important it is to get ahead of the curve. I hope this video was interesting for you. It's a little bit of an icky topic, but we've got to talk about pests to educate ourselves to really be able to prevent those ones um, from happening or when they happen uh, to know how to control them. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments or if you're having trouble with any other pests where I can help you with with another video to dissect um, what it is and how we can get rid of it together. I would love to. And as always, subscribe and watch another video. Thank you.